Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Um, today I'm doing a bit of an admin task, a bit of a like studio maintenance task, and I'm replacing the elements in my kiln here. The elements go through hot and cold cycles and that's quite harmful for them, it's quite um, challenging. So yeah, every now and again they just degrade and you need to replace them. I have ordered a packet of elements and we're gonna um, replace them together today. I just wanna start with a big old disclaimer that I'm not an electrician. And I've got my husband here who's also not an electrician and he and I um, just want to say if you are not comfortable with doing stuff like this then don't do it. We um, do it together and we do it really really carefully and methodically to make sure that we're doing it safely. These are designed to be replaced by their users, so us, it's, it's okay to do it, but if you are someone who is freaked out by the kind of concept of this then absolutely get an electrician in or a technician. Claim it over but please have your wits about you when you're doing this because this stuff is, is dangerous, you know, it's really hot, it's a lot of power going into them, so um, yeah, just don't be stupid about it, please. Telltale signs that you need new elements in your kiln. Sometimes you can do a visual check and you can see that there's a break in the elements, sometimes they kind of look okay. Firstly, it takes ages to get to temperature, longer than your firing schedule um, kind of allows for. And second of all, a big one is that it doesn't get to temperature at all. Um, you definitely need new elements. When I replace my elements, I tend to do them all at the same time. If they've all been fired at the same rate um, and they've kind of all aged at the same rate, then you don't want to have an uneven firing by replacing just one kind of bank. So I tend to always replace them all in one go. The way that you can test if your elements are working or if you're not sure if kind of one bank of elements is out and the others are okay, is by ripping up some little pieces of paper and kind of popping them underneath the elements in their wee grooves and turning the kiln on high, monitoring it, quickly turning it off. You can see where the elements have heated up and they will leave little scorch marks on the pieces of paper. Just a quick heads up, uh, visuals wise, I'm gonna turn the lights on, the big ugly fluorescence and I hate how they look in these videos, but um, obviously I need to see what I'm doing because I'm keeping my wits about me within this kiln. So yeah, ex please excuse that, it is what it is. Uh, that says on, not good. That's off, that is good. Um, important, keep your little screws aside in a little dish or something because they're very easy to lose. Okay, here we go. Ooh! What I always do when I open up the kiln and I'm changing elements is I take a photo of what it looks like now because I don't want to um, be halfway through everything and be like, where am I, what am I doing? So I'll take a photo and I might even draw a little diagram because it's quite nice to kind of have everything laid out. This brown one goes here, this blue one goes here. Everything is all sorted out. While we're here, we can have a little look. So these are the element banks. So we've got one, two, that's it, which is pretty cool. This is plugging into the thermocouple which is like the temperature gauge. This, I don't know what that's doing. Um, this is the relay. So this is the thing that makes that click noise when you have a kiln going off and on. This, I don't know what that is. Might also be a relay, who knows. If you don't know what something is, don't touch it. You don't need to get involved. All we're doing is replacing these and the elements and everything else we're not touching. It's not our business. We're not electricians. Just this stuff. One, two, three, four. And we have brown top, a connection, blue top, brown bottom, a connection, and blue bottom. And that's all we're touching. We're not touching any of this stuff. Okay, we're gonna open it up and have a look inside. I know that there's no actual damage to the elements. I just don't know if it's not working properly, so. Open it up and have a look. What we need to do in here in terms of preparation is we need to remove this kiln shelf and these props and then we need to actually get rid of the elements. So let's have a look in here. We've got this top bank. We've got the brown, the connection and the blue. And then the second bank we have the brown, the connection and the blue. So we kind of can understand what's going on in here. We also have so these are the elements going around the coils and we have these pins here. So we're gonna need to get some pliers and we'll just remove these pins 
Um, it's not too many in this kiln, which is nice because we've got these nice deep grooves. So um, we'll go around, remove them and get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the um, brittleness of these elements to our advantage and I'm going to clip one by one on this side and we're going to do a little wiggle test with Jack on the other side to make sure that we're in the right place. Okay, here's the first bank of used elements and if we compare them to the brand new ones, you can see they are vastly different. We've got um, a whole lot of different colour here. This is oxidation on the elements from um, heating up and cooling down so many times. And these ones are fresh. While we're in here, we can um, get rid of all this debris. So I think a pot exploded at some point. So I'm going to get my um, little brush and get all of this crap out um, so that it doesn't damage the new elements at all. So Jack is undoing all of the things at the minute um, on the inside. Every kiln is different. so. Um, not every kiln will have bolts like this. Some have like little clip thingies. Some have, um, I don't know, they, they're all slightly different, but um, they're all kind of the same thing. Like the elements attach to a wire where the power comes from. So um, however your kiln is kind of already, you should follow that. Everything has been unpinned on the inside of the kiln. Um, all of these have been undone from their wires and we know which wire is which because they are all labelled with a piece of tape. I have unwrapped my new elements from the package and we're ready to go. Okay, that was a bit of a nightmare, but when you are getting your elements ready, your new ones, you want to be really careful with them. You can see that Northern Kilns, when I ordered them, they have bent them exactly to shape. I told them my model of kiln and so they have sent me this exact model of element. I'm going to I'm gonna thread this bit through so that I can it can hold it in place. And we're going to follow the grooves around. We'll do the same for the next one, feeding it through that hole where the um, old elements were. So sometimes it seems like there's loads of excess, but kind of when you start feeding it around, it actually ends up fitting. So we'll start by kind of pulling it half out, poking it through that hole. Now we have the elements nicely fed in um, and they are kind of housed in their little spot. I am going to get to pinning them in place exactly where they were pinned last time. And Jack is going to be on the other side, bending the wires into place the same way as they were because kiln brick is so soft, it's really easy to kind of feed these into where they need to go just with your hands. If you can um, follow the holes where they used to be, that's handy. But you don't have to, just go into the back of the coil rather than the front. So you want to kind of pin it into, into the wall at the back there. Here's another example. It's pushing into the back rather than at the front. I push all of the pins in first with just my fingers and then I go around all of them with the needle nose pliers and I really press them in. To start with I just kind of place them where they need to go. Okay we are at the point now where we are going to plug this in and we're going to turn it on. Wits are still about us, we're being clever, we're not faffing around inside of the kiln anymore um, and we're going to do the paper test to see that all of the elements are indeed connected properly. <laughs> what the f***? <sighs> okay, we'll be cutting that out. <laughs> On. So I'm just going to go down and um, pop a piece of paper underneath each bank of elements so that when we turn it on we can see where the scorches are showing. So you'll remember when we were installing it, these are connected so we just need one here, need one here. Let's kind of tuck them in and make sure that they're touching and I'll do the other two as well. We'll close up the lid and I'm going to set the programmer to um, do a really quick kind of ramp up so that the elements get hot quickly. 
we'll turn it off after like a minute so it's not going to actually get too hot I like to let it go until I can smell a little something something whether it's a little burny smell or like a little bit of just kind of element crap can you see this steam coming I can smell burning so that's good I'm gonna stop it now okay obviously we don't want to touch the elements because they absolutely will be hot this one you can see some scorch marks so that's great number one is working number two you can see some scorch marks there so it is working three scorch marks it's working and four scorch marks it's working hooray usually I would leave that a little bit longer because I could immediately see smoke um, I didn't want it to catch on fire so I stopped it however I could see that all of them are working so yeah we can be confident that it's gonna be good uh, thanks to Jack for all his help today I'd be a hot mess without you helping me here and this would also definitely not be done because I don't have the brain for it so thanks Jack okay that's it everything is done the elements are working everything's put back in its place and to kind of seal the deal we need to oxidize the elements so they need to go through a bisque firing with no pots in there and just make sure there is some cone packs to make sure that the elements are getting to the correct temperature and that's it make sure you're subscribed for um, pottery tutorials random studio maintenance things like this um, other stuff you expect from a pottery channel. I will see you next week for another video. Bye!